really struggle to delegate for a whole range of reasons, starting with limiting beliefs. They have a whole range of beliefs that they hold, not necessarily consciously, that stops them from handing work over. Things like, uh, I do it better than anyone else, so I shouldn't hand it off. I do it faster, it's just quicker if I do it myself. Uh, another limiting belief is if I hand stuff over and they do do it better, I'll, I'll look bad. Uh, another limiting belief could be I don't have time. It's just, I'll just get on and do it and I'll, I'll show them how later. So people hold on to things because there's stuff limiting them from, from handing it over. The other thing is they don't necessarily even understand what's on their plate and that's why I talk about doing a task audit in the book which is knowing actually what is on their plate, what do they need to do, because we get, they get so busy doing and in the detail uh, and they're good at it because they used to be the technical experts and they still are, so easier for them to do it. And then that prevents them from stepping back and identifying what is it that they should be focusing on. So what they do when they're not delegating well is they get so busy that they're not even engaging with their team as they should be. So their team is sort of floundering, trying to work out what they're doing and watching their boss going, working long hours, being really busy, taking stuff off their plate. And, and so literally that manager starts pushing down a level, so they're not operating at the level they should be, which pushes their team down. mistakes that happen when, when managers delegate is what I call the limbo or the buyback, that, which is where they hand a task over because they know they need to, to get some stuff off their plate because they're overwhelmed, they're exhausted and they're struggling with their workload. So they decide to delegate and they hand something over and then they basically hold it. They'll, they'll say, check with me before you do X, Y, Z or they don't give them a deadline, so it almost goes in limbo because the other person doesn't know how urgent it is. Or they basically say, check with Bob down the corridor before you do anything with that. So the person that's been given that task actually doesn't know what they're supposed to do because it's like the, 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 the leader still has it, or they've basically put it on hold. know what makes us tick and what we're good at and we also need to know what makes our team tick and what they're good at and so if we can build up that awareness we're much more likely to be able to delegate effectively to the people in our team. The other way to effectively delegate is actually to even know what's on our plate and in my book Level Up I talk about the task order which is you list everything that's on your plate and nine times out of ten when you review that you find that some of them you definitely have to keep and you have to do. There's quite a few things that are on your plate that you can delegate and then it's a matter of working out who to. And you also find that there are tasks that actually you don't need to do. Successful delegation is where you really understand your team and you're delegating tasks appropriate for that person that you're delegating to. When delegation is done well, it's like the whole team lifts. You lift because you're getting rid of that, that overwhelm that's on your to-do list. And that lifts your team because they're doing different work. And suddenly, because everyone's lifting, if you're a leader of leaders, then your leaders can delegate better and that lifts their team. So the whole organisation will then lift with, with great delegation. Mm -hmm.